All right, everyone. Let's go into the Virginia War Museum. Hours are Wednesday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission in adults, $8 for adults. Seniors 62 and above, 7. Children 7 to 18, 6. Under 7, free. The family is 20. And let me tell you, the staff here is fantastic. So, please visit the Virginia War Well, we're in the museum, and we're going to be as quiet as possible so as not to irritate anyone. So we're starting with the American Revolution, the Northern Campaigns, and here we have our muskets. And again, um, Chris of VA Travels did a wonderful video of this museum, too. So... We'll just try to hit some highlights. The War of 1812 section. Very, very nice display case of swords and muskets and a Charleville. I can pick a Charleville out at 100 yards. Really nice display case here. Now the Mexican War is featured. And the Halls of Matsuzuma. So the Marines going over to Tripoli. And it's amazing that uh, we're still dealing with things over there. So, um... Boy, there's a lot to see here, and I'm only doing the snippets. We're in our the American Civil War section. We have our swords, sabers. Here's a nice display case of Civil War shoulder arms. Um, all the different muskets, carbines, Spencer repeating rifle, and then our sidearms, our pistols, and of course the ever-present medical officers. Here's a nice display case of a cavalry trooper with his uniform, canteen, carbine, saber, boots, and of course the infantrymen. Nice display on ironclads and projectiles. I guess we're going to head this direction. And here we have a Confederate uniforms. And there's a great coat. Let's stay warm. All right. The ironclads in the Navy. Beautiful mural. All right, Warriors of the West. That's a Remington rolling block. Uh, the Egyptian army used those. The Indian Wars and the Plains Indians. Of course, we have the Trapdoor Springfield 4570. There's Duty on the Plains. Okay, we're heading into the Spanish-American War, which is one of our wars that's neglected in our history books. The liberation of Cuba, and Teddy Roosevelt. Now there's a nice 
painting of the Battle of Manila Bay, I believe. Oh, Santiago. My mistake. All right. Now, I believe. Oh, the Philippines. So, now the old stone fort in Schoharie, New York, has a huge collection in their old stone fort church of Philippines Maro stuff. They must have had someone that fought and brought the stuff back to upstate New York near Albany. Uh, Maro Shields. So, we have a Craig rifle or a spring right I think that's a Springfield Craig yes it is 1903 all right so we have our World War one era tank the same same one from uh, the United States Army Heritage Center okay now we're in our World War I era, so we'll just zap this off. Of course, the trench war. Now that is an anti-tank rifle. German Mauser 13.2 millimeter. And of course the German stick grenade, potato masher. Now, here we have our World War I pistols. I like to bring point out the Mauser Broomhandle machine pistol was Winston Churchill's favorite weapon, and he used that at the Battle of Omdurman. And we have our so here's our Doughboy uniform, and we have helmets, trench trench mask, and our gas mask, of course. Um, there's the Browning automatic rifle that was used all the way up through Vietnam. The Browning automatic rifle was still in the weapons lockers of some of the Vietnam era destroyers. And of course the French machine gun that always jammed because the magazine had an open slots here that was to see if how much ammo you had but it filled up with mud and would cause jamming it was a mess and of course we have the shotgun which the Germans really hated the Americans using it because it was so devastating and here we have a Lewis gun in a World War I aircraft diorama set which is really spiffy all right, the rise of air power yeah, as World War I really was uh, the first war, of course, using the aircraft. And now we are in Bataan, World War II. And you'll see a Tommy gun here. And now at the Maryland Veterans Museum gave us a good talk about the Tommy guns in one of my other videos. Now, I really can't do justice in this museum. There is just so much to see. We're heading into the, the World War II German Allied sections. So here's our mess kit. Canteen going into the weapons. All right, so here's our display of the M1 Garand, the carbine, the Colt 45, the BAR automatic rifle, same as the World War I version with a little upgrades, plus it has the bipod there. We have our Tommy gun and our grease gun, a 30 caliber Browning machine gun with a shoulder stock, the 1903 Springfield sniper rifle. Just amazing. 
And down at the bottom is a 30 caliber machine gun with the water jacket. That big tube kept water in it to keep the barrel um, cool. Okay, mine detector. Now there's a 50 caliber machine gun which would be used on many vehicles but really used a lot on the World War II bombers and fighters. And here we have a nice display of our World War II aviators. We have a B-17 bomber north end sight. A nice display on a, a bomb. Okay, we are now heading into to Japan. So, this is the Johnson light machine gun, and I really don't know much about it. it I think it was an in and out thing, and I don't want to bore you with it, so you'll need to Google it. Our United States Marine Corps section. Oh boy, the Winter War. We're going into Korea. We have a mortar here, flamethrower, the Korean War era flak jacket. And then heading into the Vietnam era also. Well, Vietnam uniforms and equipment a 40 millimeter reproduction of a rocket there's the AK-47 assault rifle the Chicom Type 56 some Chinese grenades alright and now the red tipped bullets on there I believe are the tracers I'll continue our tour and then uh, here's the array of M16s assault rifles and the M14 and of course the M60 machine gun and here's our Vietnam era aviator and now we're looking at a Jeep okay so Hampton Roads port of embarkation and this is the train to uh, head out to war. So trains were... So this is a, a cargo train. And I have to read the one placard, but it's pretty cool that they still have this. We have our military camps. Okay. All right, we're now entering the Axis forces. Um, there's so much to see here, it's almost overwhelming. So we are in the Japanese section. We have our Japanese swords where all the officers would be carrying them. The many Japanese rifles. Uh, now if I had Mr. Nell here from the Maryland Veterans Museum. Now this is a neat item they have in this display case. That's a Japanese knee mortar. And they would drop a little grenade in there. And as you see in their picture, they were pretty accurate with those. They really were. Okay, we have our 
many different Japanese machine guns and I could spend hours going through telling you about all of these but this just gives you a, a glimpse and a feel of the different weapons they have here. Now this is a nice display here with this Japanese soldier manning his machine gun type 99 light machine gun 7.7 .7 millimeter now everyone is probably that watches my channel is familiar with the zero so and here's a Japanese aviators flight suit and this is a zero propeller that is pretty cool Japanese Marines okay we're heading into the Italian section and of course Italy fought um, with the axes till about 43 and then they overthrew Mussolini and um, basically joined the Allies so they fought gallantly on the Russian front in North Africa. They were just poorly led and poorly supplied. Now that's a Boifers anti-tank gun, I believe. But I could be 100% wrong. It is a La anti-tank gun rifle from Finland. Okay. And it has little sleds on it. Come on, you got to say that's cool little skis so, Finnish soldier Romanian now you don't see a lot of display stuff from Romanian either so really nice they have both Finnish and Romanian troops here and Australian so my viewers in Australia, we have Australian firearm, and it is an Owen Mark submachine gun. Allies of World War II, really nice. France. China, Burma. Very nice display. Okay. Third time's a charm. This one's a boys anti-tank rifle, Mark I. Alright, so if you played the Avalon Hill Tobruk game from 50 years ago, that's been that counter was quite well used in that board game. Alright. Soviet Union. The DP machine gun had a weird ammunition tray, cylinder disc. All right, we're coming into the, the German stuff, the Nazi stuff. And just so you know, I may be a swastika here and there, and I can't help that in my video panning. So, so we have the German SS. And we have some German machine guns, the MG 34 and 42, German rifles and pistols. Okay, we have a really cool Panzerfaust, which is the anti tank weapon, a one shot deal, with a nice picture of German soldiers carrying it and using it. And our German MP40 machine guns. And a landmine. MP44 and 43. And if you remember, 
in one of my other videos, now goes into great detail about these weapons. Alright, here's the six pounder rapid fire gun. Rate of fire 40 rounds per minute. Okay, um, the Global War on Terror will be our last section. That's a new exhibit. So, let's do a panorama view of what's in this room. German 88, everyone. We'll hit that in a moment. And a Gatling gun. All right, let's start right to left. We have a supply wagon. Really neat. Here we have our World War I era truck. Three, five ton Pierce Aero truck, 1919. Canvas roof, well restored. Look at those tires. Okay. This is the model 1893 heavy field howitzer. This is the model 98 Krupp gun, German. And you'll notice here they can ride up front when they're pulling it along with the limber and I love the camouflage pattern. Now this is a pom-pom gun and Boy Scout Eagle Scout project by Cameron P. Warren reworked this in 2014. Um, he did a fantastic job um, and everyone's heard of pom-pom guns in the Boer War so fast firing large caliber shell. Here we have a torpedo and a mortar. Okay, here's some ordnance shells for the different weapons from bazookas. Eighty-one millimeter mortar and We'll stop here for a moment. All right, this is a really neat display. This is a World War I artillery piece set up in its firing pit. See how it's all so it's in its defensive position. Artillery on the western front. Just a phenomenal display. So you have your spotters, your gunners. Uh, the backdrop mural is fantastic. Here's our tractor, that uh, prime hauler. I'm amazed they even have one of these. I mean, and then we have our mortars. Some of the there's gas mass. Of course, the poison gas, mustard gas, is horrible. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to go along this wall. We have more World War I mortars. More machine guns. 1964. All right. Well, what do you say we hit the Stuart tank? Now, everyone knows that Goober the Traveling Bear has a Stuart tank. It's remote control. Kilroy was here. Famous saying in World War II. And so this is a Stuart tank. My Uncle Richard used a Stuart tank throughout his career in the military when he got... Uh, I don't know if he was enlisted or drafted, but he knew how to use tractors from working on the farm. So he ended up being a driver of a tank, and he fought through North Africa and all the way through the Battle of Bulge when his tank got blown up and he was wounded. But he did make it back home, and I think he lived in 94 at the Molino Christmas Tree Plantation in Endicott, New York. So this Stuart tank looks just awesome. 37 millimeter gun and of course there's several variants of the Stuart. When they were sent to North Africa they were they did really well for the most part even though their gun was a little too small to penetrate some of the German armor it moved very quickly. Now I'm turning our direction to the dreaded 88 as Oddball would say the 88 on the Tigers was uh, devastating. This is an anti-aircraft gun, but also used as an anti-tank gun. Sometimes it would have a front mantle shield on it, sometimes it wouldn't. Used with devastating effect in North Africa also. Uh, and it's big. And it's really neat they have one here in this museum. And of course, gotta remind everyone I can't hit everything in this video. And Chris of VA Travels also has a video of this museum. They have German uniform. Okay, we're gonna hit this line of artillery pieces and get focused in. 37 millimeter Czechoslovakian cannon. We have a plethora of machine guns here. And of course, if I was to read all of these, um, you'd be bored and would turn off my, my channel. So that's uh, a German machine gun there. This is French, the Hotchkins, and the French Foreign Legionnaires. Now, what's in the back is really cool, and I will talk about that for a moment. This is the Colt machine gun potato digger. The recoil on this would cause that tripod to actually dig into the ground. So they called it the potato digger. So, very cool. Now, here we have a Gatling gun. And of course, we all know that the Gatling gun is the gun that it's basically it's the cousin or little brother to the machine gun. It, the hand crank there operates the cylinders, they spin, and the ammunition comes in from that drum. Now, some Gatling guns had a stick magazine, such as the one in La Plata on GG the Gatling gun in uh, the Maryland Veterans Museum. So, oh, just incredible room with big vehicles that you don't see often. And we're going to go into the global war of terror on terror next. Okay, we're going into the global war on terror room. And we'll go right to left. This exhibit is brand new, they told me. So, they. Operation Neptune Spear. The 
the Afghan National Army. The Mark VI British helmet. We have Italian troops, British troops. U.S. Airmen, 2006. Female engagement team. Okay. And sadly, the explosives. The roadside mines, I did a video on that at the Army Heritage Center um, be set up on a guardrail under the ground on the side of the road with devastating effect to our troops and allies. All right, here we have a really nice diorama. You have our allied soldiers. Uh, looks like he has a hand grenade to go in and there's our terrorists so Saddam Hussein US Navy Airman 2005 The War on Terror Room is, it's got a lot of information on these placards. U.S. Special Operations Forces, Islamic Fundamentalist Taliban Fighter again, U.S. Coast Guard, the Maritime Evacuation. The Coast Guard really has done enormous amount throughout its through our military history, and they're sort of forgotten. I think um, you know they were you know they've really dealt enormous amount with landing troops from you know the Pacific and uh, D-Day, and so they don't always get their fair uh, fair talk at times. So. We're going to make sure 9-11 maritime evacuation that they get their just dues on this uh, video. If you served, had served or are serving as a Coast Guard person, thank you for your service along with everyone else that watches my videos. Alright, so it's 9-11. Uh, happened and it's amazing now we have people young people that uh, weren't born when this happened so we have to make sure it's not forgotten and this exhibit was just phenomenal the global war on terror terror at the uh, Virginia War Museum all right as I uh, Head back towards the other areas of the museum. I'm going to just check and see if I've missed anything. And I do believe I may have missed this one area. Oh, well, we need to talk about the terrible, terrible. Well, you know, it's very difficult for me to discuss the um, the torture camps. Um, my wife is Jewish, and she had relatives that died, and uh, she talks about it in the relatives that did survive. So, all I'm going to say here is, let's not forget the six million or more that died and never to have it happen again. Terrible.
Okay, we're going to uh, close this out soon. We have Virginia's Hello Girl. Telephone operators and communicate. All right, everyone, let's go into the Virginia War Museum. Hours are Wednesday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission in adults, $8 for adults, seniors 62 and above, 7. Children, 7 to 18, 6, under 7 free. The family is 20. And let me tell you, the staff here is fantastic. So, please visit the Virginia War Museum. They have a lot of stuff, don't they, Goober? It is two paws up, according to Goober. Thank you. Stay safe. Be kind. Be courteous.